A crosstab query is just like a pivot table in Excel, similar to a cube in analysis services. But what it does is it pulls the data out so that you can have columns and rows all calculating the intersection of the column and row. In this crosstab, we're looking at the sum. So each cell is the sum. And I'll walk through the query in a moment. Let's just go ahead and look at the results first. So this cell is the sum of category X sold in region south, category Y sold in northeast. We also added a column with a total for each category. There are several ways to build queries that generate crosstabs. I'm going to ignore the correlated subquery method because it doesn't scale very well. And this is the sum case method. So for each row, it will return the current category. That would be X. The second column returns a column called South. And there's a case expression in here. When the region is equal to South, then the case expression returns the amount. Otherwise, it returns a zero. So this case expression then filters out so that the sum only sums the amounts for the region of South. It works very quickly because as it goes through the row, it finds the category, sums up for each particular case for the different regions. And then in the end, we have a column for the, the total amount. And then we're grouping by category, which is how we ended up with the three category rows and order by category. And it runs great. SQL Server 2005 introduced the pivot command. The pivot command takes place inside of the from clause. And that's important to note. And in the pivot command, inside the parentheses, we identify the formula being used for the cell. And then for region, which identifies the categories to be spread across the different columns. And we actually have to hard code the values for those columns. And then give an alias for that data source of the pivot. So let's execute this and see what we get. Huh, and this doesn't look very good at all, does it? Let me scroll this up so we can see it. We ended up with several rows for each category, and it threw in a sales date column too. I added the sales date column so we can see why we ended up with several rows for each category. And this is the gotcha of the pivot command. The fact that we can identify the cell, we can identify the columns but there's no place to explicitly state which columns we're going to group by to determine the rows. The pivot command simply assumes, or implicitly assumes, that any column that is not being used by the cell or by the group by columns is being used to group by for the rows. And that's why it added sales date there. So in most real world situations, when using the pivot command, You'll need to go ahead and use some kind of subquery so you extract only the columns you want to work with. Here's the column being used for the cell. Here's the column for the group by for the columns. Here's the column for the group by for the rows. And now we end up with the crosstab query the way we want it to be. Interestingly enough, the query execution plan for this pivot command is identical to the query execution plan for the sum case method. So use whichever one you feel most comfortable with as far as syntax. There's no performance difference. Personally, I like the sum case method. It looks more obvious to me. The next query expands on pivot and adds a total column at the end. Notice that I use the isNull function. So if there's any nulls being returned, they'll get converted into zeros so the addition can take place without error. Another ramification of the fact that the pivot takes place inside the from clause is that if you want to use the where clause to restrict rows, you have to do that in a subquery prior to the pivot. So for example, and although this doesn't make a lot of sense as a meaningful restriction, but for illustration purposes, this subquery will restrict the rows to only the category of Z. So execute this query, 
And sure enough, we get a pivot table, but it's only category Z. Now, even if you're excited about pivot tables, like I am, you're probably still bummed that you have to hard code the regions, either using the pivot method or the sum case method. You have to hard code all of that. To get around that, a solution is to build a dynamic cross tab with T-SQL code actually investigating the data, determining what the regions might be, assembling the code, and then executing it dynamically. And that's what this code does. Many of the details of this batch of code will be discussed in a lesson later on on T-SQL programming. But because this is building a cool aggregate query, I wanted to show it to you now. And sure enough, the result is the same kind of pivot table cross-tab query we've been working with. To give a brief explanation of how this works now that you've seen the result, here's a variable called SQL string. We're using what's called a multiple assignment variable. So the results of this subquery, I'll go ahead and execute the subquery, and you'll see it's just a listing of the columns. So the results of this subquery are appended in a common delimited fashion to the at SQL string variable. And that subquery, as you can see, just returns a listing of the columns. So what we end up with is a string variable, and the contents of that string variable is a common delimited list of the columns we're going to be used for the group by in the pivot command. This line trims off the trailing comma. Then this variable is used in two places to insert the list of grouped by columns into our final select string. This prints out the string just so we can see the result, and I'll show you that in a second. And then this command executes that dynamic string. So what we've done is we've used SQL to dynamically assemble SQL and then execute SQL, which is very cool. Let me execute this one more time. And then if we go over to the messages, you'll see here is the SQL string that was assembled. And this was dynamically created and assembled in. And then again over here. And again, there's the two places where the dynamic SQL string was assembled into it. And there you have a dynamic method of building cross-tab queries, which is very cool.